Hello and welcome to the Department of Molecular and Cell Biology at the University of California, Berkeley. This presentation is for if you're interested in applying to our PhD program or you just want to learn more about the MCB department at Berkeley. First, I'll go uh, through an overview of the department and talk about the program structure. Then I'll go on to talk about our alumni, the funding structure, and finally application information if you're interested in applying. So where is Berkeley? Well, we're in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're across the bay from San Francisco, and there are even parts of campus from where you can see the city or the Golden Gate Bridge. It's really easy to get to San Francisco and the surrounding towns through public transportation. A lot of our students don't live in Berkeley, but maybe live in Oakland or another smaller town around. And all of these towns have really great food. They're really diverse. Then if you do have a car or rent a car outside of the Bay Area, there's a lot of really great spots for hiking. Point Reyes is not too far away, neither is Santa Cruz. If you want a little bit of a longer drive, there's Yosemite and Lake Tahoe if you want to go camping or skiing. So what makes MCB special? We have an egalitarian culture of science, mentorship, and education. Our faculty really work with our students to help develop them as researchers in their own right. We're also highly collaborative. We work with a lot of the other departments and programs on campus. A lot of our faculty don't just belong to the MCB department, but they're associated with a lot of the other programs on campus. So depending on which lab you join, you might be working with students from not just MCB, but biophysics, computational biology, et cetera. We also have a lot of our faculty working on really cutting edge research at some of the institutions that are associated with UC Berkeley. One such faculty is Jennifer Doudna. She recently won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her work on CRISPR. Randy Sheckman is another one of our Nobel Prize winners. Um, but regardless of if our faculty have been at Berkeley for a number of years or they're more junior or newer, all of our faculty are really eager to take in new graduate students, to train new scientists and bring fresh, young, new ideas into their labs. The Molecular and Cell Biology Department is composed of about 90 labs and five divisions. The divisions aren't as important to our students, they're more for administrative purposes. So you will join a lab, not a division, during rotations, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. You'll have the opportunity to rotate in a genetics lab, a developmental biology lab, and a biochemistry lab for example, if those are what you're interested in. So you don't need to know ahead of time which division you want to join. You can just follow where your research interests are. A few facts about the MCB PhD program. Uh, most of our classes have between 35 to 40 students. The current department size is 205 students. It is a fully funded program. The stipend for 2020 to 2021 is 37,750. And I'll go over more of the funding in a few minutes. Most of our students complete their PhD in about five and a half to six years. Some students do it a little bit uh, less, some take a little bit more time. In addition to um, getting your research skills and professional training, you'll also come out of the MCB program with better writing and presentation skills. And I'll especially go over the presentation skills in a moment. There's great career development opportunities through MCB. For instance, we work closely with QB3, an institute on campus, and they have great career development, including the individual development plan. This is something we actually require our students do at least three times during their PhD. You sit down and you go through, you know, what you think you might want to do after you graduate and what skills you should be working on now as a student. And we have you do it a few times because what you want to do in your first year versus what you might want to do your third or fifth year when you graduate can really change and so can the skills and the experience that you should be gaining as you go through your PhD. A lot of our students aren't necessarily interested in going into academia, but they want to join industry, they want to join a company, especially as we're so close to Silicon Valley. So we do have the industrial affiliates program, we're partnered with um, a lot of companies that will do presentations for our students and there's a lot of networking opportunities with these companies as well. And some of our students, they're also interested in training in other programs. And so for instance, if you're interested in computational biology, there is the opportunity to do a designated emphasis in computational biology. This is basically the equivalent of doing a minor. So on to uh, student life. As a first year, you'll really get to experience the inclusive MCB program or IMCB. 
Um, and this is meant to help our students transition into the first year of graduate school, regardless of your background. So whether you're coming straight from undergrad or you took some time off, whether you had great mentors or you had to navigate the process a little bit more on your own, you know, whatever that background is, IMCB gives everyone the tools and the resources that they need to feel like they can succeed and really belong in MCB and UC Berkeley. So one part of IMCB is a conference that happens at the very beginning of the year during orientation. We bring in keynote speakers. We also have workshops from the multicultural education program on campus. And it's a great time for our first years to get to know each other. Um, and it's really great for community building. You also have the opportunity to hear from older students um, and we do identity based groups. So whatever you identify as, you'll have the opportunity to meet other students, um, both first years and older, both MCB and non MCB who share similar backgrounds or identities with you. After the conference, you'll have the opportunity to join the faculty mentorship program where you'll have um, a faculty mentor who does not necessarily share research interests with you. In fact, we encourage you to find a mentor who does not necessarily have research that you're interested in rotating in. It's a great opportunity to have a sounding board to talk through anything that comes up during your first year or beyond in grad school. And lastly, the third pillar of IMCB is postdoc sessions. In a few minutes, I'll talk about MCB 200, which is a class you'll take in your first year, and the postdoc sessions supplement this class. Um, so if there's a concept you're not quite understanding, you feel like you're falling behind, or you just want to talk through an idea, you can go and talk to these postdocs. And a great thing about IMCB is it is student led. They plan the conference, they find the faculty mentors, they find the postdocs. They also do a journal club that meets regularly to discuss um, relevant articles that help influence the programs that IMCB does. In addition to IMCB, we have a few other student groups within MCB, and just to name a few. We have uh, the MCB Grad Network. They put on panels. Um, so for instance, before you pick your rotation lab, they do a, a panel on how to pick your first rotation lab. They also have peer mentorship. So you can have a faculty mentor through IMCB, and then you can have a peer mentor through MGN. And this is um, an older student who can give you advice um, from the perspective of a student. We have the Graduate Student Organization, or GSO. Um, this is more like the student body government. They serve on a lot of our committees and they're elected into their roles. For instance, they'll serve on the admissions committee. So if you do apply to MCB, it won't just be faculty reading your application, but students as well and giving their input too. We have a lot of seminar series in MCB. In addition to just bringing in people to talk about their research, we're also inviting people to talk about initiatives that they've done in their own work for justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, through the GSO, we also have Koshlin seminars, and this is completely student run. The students pick speakers from all around the country who come and visit Berkeley and talk. And you all have the opportunity to go to lunch or dinner or just a networking reception with these speakers, but it's completely student nominated speakers, um, student run. Another student run, practice that we're excited about is MCB 295. It's a careers course. Um, the students who organize this, they bring in speakers from many different types of careers um, beyond academia. So you really get exposure to other things that uh, you might be interested in. So the PhD program structure, most of your coursework will be done uh, in your first and second year. Um, and in your second year, you'll teach and then you'll take your qualifying exam in the spring. And once you've done that, you'll have advanced to candidacy and mostly your time will be devoted to doing your research and then writing your dissertation. So as I mentioned earlier, um, in the first semester of your first year, you'll take MCB 200. This is a fundamentals class. Those five divisions I talked about earlier, um, you'll learn about all five of those. So if you come in really strong knowing about one thing, you'll get to learn about the other things too. And this brings everyone up to the same knowledge base so that you can also expand your choices for where you might want to rotate or um, do your thesis project even. Before rotations begin in the first couple weeks of the fall semester, you'll go to um, Faculty Evening Research Presentations or FERPS. So this happens over two or three weeks and we have around 65 faculty who give 15 minute presentations, um, usually over dinner, and they talk about their research and their labs and also potential rotation projects for our students. 
um, a lot of our students will come out of FERPS wanting to rotate in a lab that they really had no idea about before. And once FERPS is done is when rotations will begin. So you'll submit um, your top three choices to an algorithm. It'll uh, run everyone's choices and try and maximize the amount of students who get their first choice for each rotation round. You're guaranteed to get your first choice at least once. And you know, if your interests change from the first rotation to the second rotation, you're always going to be asked to give three preferences. So you can completely change who you want to rotate with. And one of your rotations can also be outside of MCB. So as I said before, a lot of our faculty do belong to multiple departments, but occasionally you'll find a faculty member who has no affiliation with MCB. As long as they're willing to take in um, an MCB student, you can rotate with that lab. And once rotations are done, you'll have a week to discuss um, joining a lab with the PIs that you rotated in um, and the ones that you might be interested in joining. So as I said before, you'll get a lot of presentation experience um, in MCB. So it starts with your first year. At the end of your fall and spring semesters, you'll have the opportunity to present your rotation projects to the first year class as well as faculty. And the faculty will give you um, feedback to help you grow your skills so that when it comes to teaching in your second year, you, you know, have had that practice and that feedback. And maybe later on in your PhD, you'll go to conferences and present your research there as well. And your IMCB mentor, who I mentioned earlier, they're also great for um, practicing your presentation with, and they can also give you feedback before you present at SMS. In the spring of your first year, you'll continue doing your rotations. You'll take another ethics course. And then you'll also take two advanced topics courses. These are a little bit more specific and go a little bit more in depth than MCB 200 does in the fall. After your first year, uh, you'll be in your thesis lab. So you'll start really doing research. Um, you'll teach in the fall. We call it uh, graduate student instructor GSI. And while you GSI, you'll be taking a pedagogy course alongside it for the first few weeks to give you the training that you need to be a good teacher. And you also get to talk with other GSIs um, and find out what's working well for them or maybe what's not working. In the spring of your second year, you'll take the qualifying exam and advance to candidacy. And then you'll really be doing your research after that for your dissertation. Um, in your third year, you will teach again in the spring, but most of your course requirements are over. All that's left to do is take um, three to 90 seminars. These are small, mostly discussion-based, um, journal club-based um, seminars led by faculty. And you'll need to take three of them over you know, your third, fourth, fifth, even sixth year. Um, the last requirement that you have to do before you graduate is to publish one first author paper. This really gives our students the opportunity to take ownership over their research and their writing, and it looks great on your CV as well. So once all of those requirements are met, you'll finish your dissertation and you'll graduate. So what do our students go on to do once they do graduate? A lot of them will stay in academia. They'll become professors. Um, we even have some current MCB faculty members who used to be UC Berkeley MCB students. Um, but some of our uh, alumni will leave science. We even have someone who became a state representative. Um, and then some of our students will uh, go to work in industry or even found their own companies. So funding, um, you are guaranteed funding for five and a half years. Um, although if you do take a little bit longer to do your PhD, your funding can almost always be extended. Um, the funding comes from various sources, so training grants, fellowships, um, when you teach. But no matter where you're getting your funding from, which is uh, told to you by the department, you're guaranteed the departmental stipend, which, um, as I mentioned, for 2021 year is 37750 If you do want to make a little bit more, there's opportunities to help out classes by grading tests, for instance. But a lot of our students do find that the stipend MCB gives is easily um, able to live on. A lot of our students live in Berkeley or one of the surrounding towns, and they'll live with a partner or roommates. Um, but our funding also covers your tuition and all your fees as well, which includes health insurance. Um, even your bus pass is covered by these fees. So if you're commuting by bus, you don't need to worry about paying for that. So finally, applying to the MCB PhD program. So what is required of you? You'll need to submit your transcripts. We look for research experience um, so that, you know, you know if you want to devote the next few years to doing research. You should have some experience already working in a lab. 
Uh, we want three letters of recommendation. Ideally, some of these letters at least will come from um, professors who you've done research with. It should be from people who can speak to your skills um, as a scientist or as a student um, who really knows you and can talk about your experience. Your statement of purpose should talk about your research experience and also the research that you'd be interested in doing um, as part of the MCB PhD program. Your personal statement is to give the admissions committee a better idea of who you are and your background. And both of these statements, you don't want to write them last minute. You want them to stand out, be authentic to who you are, and memorable too. The GRE is optional. So if you do submit it, it will be looked at. But if you don't submit it, it absolutely does not count against you. If you haven't taken the GRE, there's no need to take it um, if you're applying to our program. There is a fee waiver available um, when you are applying to the program. It'll ask you for some documentation to see if you um, are eligible. The fee waiver is based either on financial need or if you've participated in one of about 40 or so programs. And those programs are all listed on the fee waiver website. The application deadline for 2020 is November 30th. It's 11.59.59 p.m. Eastern time. And below you will see our application website, our admissions website. If you go to mcb.berkeley.edu, you will find it there. Thank you.